your side So heaven is real And death is a lie I want to hear voices Of angels above Singing as one Singing hallelujah And that's exactly what a soul tie is. You are tied to this body of Christ. You have a soul tie that, that, that Christ keeps all things together and keeps us together and keeps us strong and keeps us edified and keeps us in the word and keeps us in love and keeps us in his mercy and his grace. He keeps us together, the body of Christ. There isn't a single limb, not a finger, not, not a nostril, not a nose, not an ear. Every single thing about the body of Christ is intact. They, we have not been dismembered. The, the body of Christ is full. And it's full because God has put the body of Christ together. He has put us together as a family. He has put us together as a unit, as an army, as a strength, as a powerful weapon against this world and the evils in this world. And we, as the body of Christ, are a massive army that is showing light to a very dark world as we speak in these days. And when you when you decide to be, become a dis, 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 disassembled or a dismembered part of the body of Christ, when you separate yourself from the body of Christ, when you decide that you're going to go it alone or when you decide that you don't feel like you're a part of this family I'm going to tell you something it's going to come back to haunt you because you cannot ever in this in these days in this time that we're in you cannot ever walk away from the body of Christ and think that you're going to do it alone God put the body together because the body of Christ is strong and through him we are able to conquer all things like he said to the disciples you're going to do what I did and go on to do even greater things that's the body of Christ he's talking about. The body of Christ has the power to do all things through Christ. And until we actually come together as a family and allow these soul ties to bond, bind, that we become unbreakable. 
immovable, unbendable, unmovable, unremovable in the body of Christ. Until that happens, you're going to see confusion. You're going to see um, uh, that people attacking one another. You're going to see people fighting against the, 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 the truth. You're going to see people fighting against God and His will. You're going to see people fighting against the Holy Spirit. You're going to see people completely and totally separating themselves from the body of Christ because they, they, they feel as though somehow they're not a member of this family, they're not a member of this body, and they want to go off and do things on their own. Maybe that white knight in shining armor. What I'm telling you is we got to allow the binding and the bonding of the body of Christ to take place in these days so that we can be the force that we have been built to be because each and every one of us individually has been given the power and the strength through Jesus Christ. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And if you get 10,000 Christians in one group, in one family, if you get, it even says in scripture that, that, that one, 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 one Christian with the body, uh, in the body of Christ can, can ward off demons and a thousand can ward off millions. So, so when we're together as a family, we're strong and we're powerful. We, we together can do anything. We together as a family can hold together, be together in the name of Jesus Christ and conquer the evil of this world. But we're not going to be able to conquer the evil of this world if we continue to battle and fight one another and try to act as though somehow we're going to be the Lone Ranger, somehow we're going to be the hero, somehow we're going to be the heroine, somehow we're going to be that one separate individual from the body of Christ. We're going to separate from the body of Christ and go off and do this battle on our own. And what I'm telling you is that you cannot do this without Christ. Jesus Christ said, he is the vine, we are the branches. Any branch separate from Christ cannot bear good fruit. So if you separate yourself from the vine, if you separate yourself from the body of Christ, of which is Christ, that is Christ, the body of Christ is Christ, and we are members of the body of Christ, adopted into the body of Christ through grace and mercy. And if you, if you separate yourself from that, I'm telling you, in John 15, it states very clearly, any branch that is apart from Christ cannot bear good fruit. But any branch that, that is in him and he is in them, in other words, if Christ is the vine, then, then that branch is going to bear a lot of fruit. And Christ, and God, and the Father is going to trim the branch so that the branch bears even more fruit. And that's where we are. We are, as the body of Christ, at a very, very serious place right now. We are going through a trimming. We are going through, God is, I'm telling you, God right now, is trimming this this body of Christ. He is he is clipping away that that isn't bearing good fruit. He is removing that that is getting in the way of good fruit. He is removing anybody and anything that that isn't that that, that isn't in the will of God and and being a light in this dark world. I'm telling you, the, Jesus Christ said, "Look, my Father will cut off the branch and drag it to the fire." That we don't we are not in control of the falling away. We are not in control of the body of Christ. All things are held together through Jesus Christ, and the Father cuts the branches. If you're not going to be a, a branch that bears good fruit, if you're not going to be a branch that is, that is that is a part of this body of Christ, if you're trying to do it alone, if you're trying to be, if you're trying to have a light shone on you that makes you the better branch of the tree, if you want everybody to recognize you as the branch that's bearing more fruit than everybody else, I'm telling you, that's not, not a branch in Christ. That's a branch in the world because if you're truly in Christ, it's not about you, it's about him. And you should know that. You should know this. If you, if you are truly in the body of Christ, you should know that the body of Christ is Christ. Is Christ. We are pencils in God's hands. He is writing out a story. He is erasing. He is erasing all the wrongs in this world. And he is doing it by throwing the truth into this world. Just exactly what he said he would do. He told Daniel, look at close the book and end days. I'm going to increase knowledge. He said also that my people uh, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So he already knew that we were destroyed for lack of knowledge. So what does our Heavenly Father do? Our Heavenly Father says, look at you're destroyed for lack of knowledge. So guess what I'm going to do in end days? I'm going to increase knowledge. And if you would just open up and receive this knowledge and allow Christ to work through you and receive this knowledge, you're going to bear good fruit because this knowledge is going to bear good fruit. When you bring people to the truth in a world great to deceive, what I'm telling you is that you're going to shine a light and people are going to see that light and they're going to be drawn to the light. They have to be. This world is too dark right now. There is way too much darkness going on. There is way too much evil happening. There is way too much separation happening. There is way too much anger. There is way too much nastiness. There is way too much sin. There is way too much love for sin. There is way too much hate 
going on in this world right now. You have to be a light in this darkness. I'm going to tell you something. People in the darkness, people are going to get sick of this darkness. People already are getting sick of it. People are getting tired the same way you and I are getting tired of this world. People are in this darkness. They're not in Christ, but they're in this darkness. But they're getting overwhelmed by the hatred. They're getting overwhelmed by the trigger points, by all of these, 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 these sins that are being promoted pridefully in today's world. And they're getting sick and tired of it. I even know gay people that are getting fed up with this push of the, of the gay agenda. I, I know, I know, I know women that want to have, you know, rights and they want it. They want to be treated fairly. They can't stand the feminist movement right now. They hate it. And they're just clinging on to their husband for dear lives because they, they already know it's wrong. And so what I'm telling you is that people are starting to wake up. The ones that are even in the darkness are starting to wake up and looking around them and going, I don't like how this feels. I don't like how this is. This isn't right. Something's not right. And they're going to look to the light because that's what they need to look to. They need to, when you're in the darkness, you need to look to the light. And we got to be that light these days. We got to be the light these days, guys. That's the body of Christ. We have a soul tied together. We are strengthened within each other through Jesus Christ. And if we if we don't work with Christ, in Christ, by Christ, and for Christ in these days, and what I'm going to tell you is, is that we are separating ourselves from the body of Christ. And when you do that, the Father will clip that branch and drag you to the fire. Just listen to the words I'm telling you. The Lord told me today that the body of Christ needs to really bind and really hold on to one another and be strengthened within each other and, and love one another and share with one another and be fair with one another and, and, and edify one another. And, and, and don't 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 discourage the body of Christ in these days. Don't, don't be angry with the body of Christ in these days. Don't be mad at each other. Don't, don't, don't point fingers at each other. Hold each other and love each other. Jesus Christ asked Peter three times, do you love me, Peter? Peter said, yeah, I love you, Lord. He said a second time, Peter, but do you love me? And Peter was like, yes, I love you, Lord. On the third time, he said, Peter, honestly, come on now, do you love me? And Peter stepped up and said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said, good, take care of my sheep, feed them. Feed them. Feed them. We have to feed each other. We have to love each other. We have to be there for each other. We have to hold each other. We have to pray with each other. We have to worship with each other. We have to edify with each other. We have to be in fellowship with each other. People are are, are, are seeking the truth in these days. This darkness is overwhelming them. People are being swallowed up by this darkness. They don't know where to go. They don't know where to run. They can't go to the church because the church is just tickling ears. They can't go to the church because the church is just trying to take their money. They can't go to the church because the church is preparing them for the world. All they need to do is they need to find the light. They got to find the light. Where's the light? Where is the light in these dark days? You're the light. We're the light. The body of Christ is the light in these days. Why are you not in this darkness shining a light? Why are you not sharing the truth? Why are you not loving one another and being with each other and feeling each other and hurting the, and hurting the, 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 the pain of those? In, why you're not hurting this pain with truth? Because you know the truth hurts and you've got to tell them the truth in order to hurt them, to wake them up, to bring them out of the darkness, to get them to the light. These people are seeking the truth right now. Why are we not, why is the body of Christ not holding on to itself? Why is the body of Christ so quick to anger with each other? Why is the body of Christ so, so, so fast to shut up people, to, 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 to keep people from speaking? Why is the body of Christ so quick to point fingers and so quick to accuse people and to, to argue with people and to look for their fame and their, their, their moment and, 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 and their, their pedestal and, and, and their, their, their altar and, and, and their, their worship? Why is the body of Christ seeking self when the body of Christ is Christ? We're not, we're not, it's not us, it's him. He is the body of Christ. Why are we not seeking, why are we not seeking deeper within our love for the Lord? Do you love me, he asked Peter, do you love me? I'm going to ask you guys, do you love the Lord? Do you love Jesus? Do you, do you love him? But do you love him? Do you love the Lord? Do you love him? If you love him, feed each other, take care of each other, hold each other, speak to each other, share with each other, edify each other, encourage each other, hold each other up. Let's get this body of Christ where it needs to be. Let's get this body of Christ where it's supposed to be. This body of Christ is supposed to be strong. This body of Christ is supposed to be strong. 
how are we how are we in the body of Christ and acting like we are cowards and acting like we're weak and act like we don't have a voice and act like we don't have a light and act like we don't have a say in what's going on in this world where where is the body of Christ? Where is the courage of Jesus Christ in this body? It's him, not us. Quit trying to do it alone. We are a family that we have a tie together. We have a soul tie. We are so strong in Christ. We are so powerful in Christ. He said that we would go on to do what he did and more. He said he that is in us is greater than he that is in this world. Where is this? Why are we not leaning on this? Why are we not pulling this out of the body of Christ and putting it into the world? Why are we so afraid to preach the gospel? Why are we so afraid to tell people the truth? Why are we so afraid? Why are we allowing ourselves to be censored? The body of Christ is bigger than this world. Jesus Christ sits above all enemies. Jesus Christ sits above all demons and principalities and powers and dark places. He sits at the right hand of God. If you are in Christ, listen to what I'm telling you. If you are in Christ, you are sitting at the right hand of God. You're sitting at the right hand of God if you are in Christ. Where is your courage? We can go boldly to the throne of God. We can go boldly to God. Where is your boldness? Where is the salt? Where is the flavor in your salt? Do you know why why we are not to lose our saltiness? Because when when back in, the, in 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 those days when salt lost its flavor, when it lost its saltiness, it was used to put on the roads to keep the dust down. In other words, the men, the people would walk on the salt that lost its saltiness. It would be beneath their feet. That's what they did with salt that lost its saltiness back in the times of Jesus. That's why he says, never lose your saltiness. You will be beneath the feet in Christ. And he sits at the right hand of God. You are in Christ. You have power in Christ. Why are we not claiming this power? Why are we not rising up? and standing up and giving God the glory and praying and worshiping relentlessly. Why are you not praying every single chance you get? Why are you not praying over people? Why are you not stopping in the middle of the street and asking people if you can pray for them? Why are you not walking up to a man on a park bench and sitting with him and saying, can I just pray for you for a minute? Why are you not worshiping God at work? Why are you not worshiping God while you're doing the dishes? Why are you not worshiping God when you're with family? Why are you not worshiping God when you're alone? Why are you not worshiping God when you first wake up before, before you put your shoes on? Why are you not worshiping God before you go to bed at night? You are to be worshiping God in truth and in spirit. Why are you not praying? Why are you not praying from the spirit? Why are you not praying for it relentlessly? Why are you not praying about everything and everybody? Why are you not asking that God's will be done? Why are you not asking for discernment? Why are you not asking for, for the truth? Why are you not asking for the courage to be able to go out and speak the truth to the people that need to hear the truth? Because I'm telling you, people are lost in this darkness and this darkness is consuming them and they are looking for a way up. Get up and do something. Get up and be a member of this body of Christ. Collect yourself with other members of the body. Get in touch with the people in this chat room. Share your phone numbers. Share your emails. Share your, your, your lives with each other. Edify one another. Talk to one another. Fight. Encourage each other. Pray for each other. Worship with each other. Send each other nice worship songs. Send each other nice prayers. Send each other nice scriptures. Send scriptures to each other. Read scripture together. Get a Skype account where you have two, three, and four people at the same time in a Skype chat and, 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 and do Bible studies together. Get up and do something, you guys. You understand something. The body of Christ is under attack right now. It's under attack and we have to fight. We have to fight for each other. We have to fight for each other. We have to fight. God is calling us to a battle, and I'm going to tell you something. You have got to stand up. He is calling us to a battle. He didn't give you this truth. He didn't give you this understanding of the world that you live in so you can sit back and look out the window waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. He gave you this truth so you could be a warrior. You have to be a warrior. You have to be a warrior. You got to stand up. Christianity is under attack. And I'm going to tell you something. That means you. That means you are under attack. That means I'm under attack. That means every single person that claims Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is under attack. And that means they're attacking Jesus Christ again.
again. They hung him on a cross 2,000 years ago, and we're allowing them to do it again. Where is our courage? Where is our strength? Where is our love? Do you love him? You cannot tell me that if you have a son or a child or a brother or a sister or a wife or a husband or a cousin or a neighbor that you love that you would allow people to attack them. You cannot tell me that if you love your wife that you would let people insult, mock, and attack her. You cannot tell me that if you had a dog that you would let somebody walk by and kick your dog if you loved your dog. So why are we letting people literally kill Christ again right before our eyes and we're doing nothing? Where is our courage? Where is it? Wait, I'm going to tell you where it is. It's in your prayer. It's in your worship. It's in your face getting to the floor. Put your face to the floor and cry out to God and ask him for discernment. Ask him for courage. Put on that full armor of God and you step up like a true Christian in these days. Because the leaders in the Christian church today are doing nothing. They are doing nothing. None of them. All of these multi-million dollar prosperity preachers are... All of these preachers that, that that brag about preaching for 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 prime ministers and, and presidents and, and and brag about preaching for for sports teams and brag about preaching in all these seminars all over the world and they get all these degrees in, the, in, in these seminars and they're theologians and they're they're amazing wonderful I mean, they they are doing nothing they're doing nothing God hasn't given them the truth because they won't do anything. God has given you the truth because he knows he wrote it into your spirit that you would have the courage to step up, stand up, and speak up. And I'm telling you, that's why you know the truth. You don't know the truth because you're smarter than everybody else. You don't know the truth because you stepped on the truth one day and it bounced and kicked you in the face, and now you seem to know the truth. You didn't find the truth. It found you. And I'm going to tell you something. God wrote it into your spirit because he wanted you to step up, speak up, and get up and do something about it. And that's what you need to be doing right now. We got to stop playing games here. We got to stop acting like this is some kind of a joke. We're just waiting on the Lord. No, we, we, got, we, got, the, we, we, got, we got this truth because God has given you the truth, because God has trusted with you the truth, because God has put the courage in you in order to speak the truth, because God is, 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 is going to be glorified when you do what God put in you to do. When God puts something in you to do and you do it, he gets glorified. When God puts something in you to do and you don't do it, he does not get glorified. Well, God only gets glorified when you complete a purpose. Jesus Christ completed his purpose on that cross. He had nothing that was going to stop him. Nothing got in his way. He told Peter, get behind me, Satan. There is no way Jesus Christ wasn't going to accomplish his purpose. God gave him something to do and he did it. And God put something in you to do. And the question is, are you prepared to do it? Because I'm going to tell you something. You better do it because God put it in you because he knows you can. He knows you can. He wouldn't have given you this truth if he thought you couldn't have handled it. He wouldn't have given you this truth if he didn't think you had the courage to be able to stand up and speak up. It is time to go to war. There's no more joking around. We are in serious, 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 serious times. And I am telling you, the clock is ticking and time is extremely short. The demons know it. They know their time for judgment is at hand. And they're going to fight back like you've never seen before. And if you've never fought a demon, you better get ready. Because if you stand up in purpose... In these days, you're gonna find out what it's like to fight a demon. Because these demons are real and they're out there and they're ready and they're looking for those that are truly in the purpose of God because they're not gonna be fighting against anybody that isn't. And make no mistake about it, thieves do not break into empty houses. Demons do not break into bodies that do not have the Holy Spirit. And demons do not attack those that are not truly connected to God with a spirit given life through Jesus Christ. Demons do not care about atheists. Demons do not care about agnostics. Demons do not care about Muslims or anybody else. Demons do not care about lukewarm Christians. You know who they care about? You know who their sights are on? Their sights are on you. That's who they're coming for. You better put on the armor of God and you better make sure it fits. You better get into scripture. You better get into worship. You better get into prayer. You better get into fellowship. And you better start uniting with the body of Christ because you got a soul tied to tend to. And I'm going to tell you right now, this war is on and there is not stopping. It's not going to stop. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And you've been prepared by this, by the hands of God. God has pre-prepared you in the kingdom of God. He has pre-prepared you for this battle. He has given you every single thing you need. He gave you his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Christ that died on the cross he gave you his only begotten son he gave you him and what did Jesus Christ do he sent you the Holy Spirit he gave you the Holy Spirit 
They gave you the body armor. They gave you the full armor of God that you would be protected and able to fight this battle in these days. What are you doing? You've got it all. You got salvation. You got Jesus Christ. You got the Holy Spirit. You got the armor of God. You've got, you've got, you've inherited the kingdom of God. You've inherited the kingdom of God. Fight for it. Fight for it. Fight for it. Fight for God. Fight for Jesus Christ. We are under attack, and if we're under attack and we are truly in Christ, then it is not us that they're after. We do not fight the flesh. We fight demons and principalities and powers in high places. And that's exactly what demons fight. Demons don't fight the flesh. Demons fight the spirit within you. Demons are fighting the spirit within you, and you better get your spirit strong before things start to happen like you could have never imagined. And I'm telling you, the time is right now. You need to get your face to the floor and get real serious. I'm going to tell you something right now, right now. God is calling you. God is calling somebody to step into their purpose. God has pushed me all day. God has pushed me. I have been out, been out in the sun all day. I am burnt. My face is so burnt, I can't even feel it. My legs are so numb, my feet are so sore. And I'm gonna tell you something, God is calling somebody to purpose. And when you get your purpose, you better fight for it. You better stand up and get ready to go to war with demons because I fight demons every single day. I got demons after me every single day. I got a demon in this town right now that's threatening to kill me because I am a Christian. Because I am a Christian. Because I believe in Jesus Christ and I take God in his word. Because I believe the earth is flat. This man has been threatening to kill me in this town because I am a Christian. I see him and he stares at me like he's waiting for any moment to smash me over the head with a bottle or to stick a knife in my back. And I just smile and give it to God. We are at war. We are so, so loved. We are so loved. If only people knew the depths of love God has for us. If only people understood the power in his love. You know, when, when, when you express his love through you, to what people have, people are pulled into your love. They're pulled into the love of Christ. But if, if, if God if God's love is in you, people are going to be drawn to that love. That's the power of the love of God. That's why we are to be lights in this darkness. You know, as, as, as much as I, I can tell you about people that, you know, attack me and people that, that want to argue with me and, and, and call me names the same way you guys get this, this ridicule. I have other people that, that don't see that. They, they, they see the light. They come to me and they... They want to talk to me and they want to hug me and they want to just sit with me and, and hear about Christ and hear about the truth. God loves us. I'm going to tell you something. Let his love flow through you. When his love through you matches the darkness, when it hits that darkness, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to pull out of that darkness people that are seeking the light. People that want to know the truth, people that are getting tired of this world are going to be drawn to you. They want what you have. They want Christ within them. I truly believe everybody does. I truly believe that even the worst of sinners, somebody caught up in homosexuality, I, I believe that they, they still deep within them have a desire to know God. But they are so consumed and in a stranglehold of sin. And, and it's like, is that God is so far off in the distance. They've lost hope of ever reaching him, and so they just cling on to their sin, their love for sin. They hold on to the ways of this world because they, they don't think they deserve Christ. I am so grateful that I know that Christ died on that cross for me and I didn't deserve it. But he thinks you deserve it. 
He thinks you deserve it. He thinks you deserve better than this world. He thinks that you deserve better than what's happening, better than what's around you, better than the insults, better than the hate, better than the sin, better than the evil, better than the demons that are running this world. He, 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 he believes you deserve better. That's why he died on that cross. We got to trust in him. We got to believe in him. You know, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. You are supposed to believe in him. Trust him with everything. Let go of this world. Letting go of this world is when you fall in to the arms of Christ. When you let go of this world, you are going to fall into God's purpose for your life. And Jesus Christ is going to be right there holding you through your purpose. The same way the Father held Christ through his, you are going to be held through your purpose. He's going to hold you through all of this. But you've got to let go of the world and fall into the arms of Christ, fall into his love, his grace, his mercy, his gentleness, his wisdom, his truth. He is the living water. If you fall into Christ, you are gonna flow in that living water all the way to the feet of the Father. Aye, 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 thank you, Jesus. Let me say that again. If you let go of the world, you are gonna fall into Jesus Christ, which whom is the living waters, and you are going to flow in those living waters all the way to the feet of the Father. And that journey that he is going to take you on is going to glorify God. It's going to glorify God. You see, we in the flesh always fall short of the glory of God. We in the flesh cannot glorify God. We're going to fall short. But Christ does not fall short to glorify God. God is glorified in his son. And if you are in Christ, and if you fall out of the world and into the living water, that journey is going to glorify God. Because the Father is glorified in Christ. And if you are in Christ, and you allow Christ to be the vine and you be the branch, He's going to take you on a journey to the feet of the Father, and through Him, God is going to get the glory. And I'm going to tell you something, you're going to have an eternity like you could have never imagined. We have been adopted out of this world. Never, ever forget that. I'm going to pray so, so, so sincerely and in spirit to the Father. I am going to lay it all down at His feet, and I am coming, I mean, I'm going to go into the throne room of God right now. I am going to speak to the Father right now. Father, I come to you after a day of absolute amazement. You were amazing today, Father. You worked through me today in ways that I was shown that there is a true evil in this world and that there are those that hate Christ. You showed me today, Father, that as a man of God, when I walk the streets, living out your will and your purpose, that there are going to be those with demonic intentions that are going to do everything in their power to try to stop me, that are going to do everything in their power to derail me. You showed me, Father, that the evil in this world truly exists, and I... Thank you, Father, for making that real. I thank you for your confirmation, because just when I think there's no evil in my way, sure enough, there it is, and you always let me know, and today you let me know that on this journey, on this path, in this way of Jesus Christ, in this purpose, there are going to be those that are going to try to stop the purpose that you have written into my life to fulfill and I thank you, Father, for reminding me and for confirming that this world is dark. And I thank you, Father, for that moment where you showed me your love and you showed me your grace and your mercy through other people. 
You showed me that you exist in the hearts of humanity, that there are those that may be living in the dark and stuck in the ways of the world, but they are seeking you. And you showed me that today, Lord, when that man came up to me and hugged me and said he missed me and he knows I'm a man of God and he knows I preach flat earth and I preach that this world as a satanic ritual. And for the first couple of conversations that we had, he laughed at me and mocked me and insulted me. And today when he seen me, he jumped out of his chair almost fell over, ran over to me, gave me a hug with tears in his eyes, and said, I missed you, man. I know you are piercing hearts, Father. I know you are piercing hearts in these days that need you. I am so thankful and so honored that you would pick me, Lord, to be a light in this world, to have me do the things that you have me doing, to have me feeding children, to have me hugging people that may never have had a hug, to having me talk to people that have nobody to speak to, to have me to have me on the streets preaching the word of God and, and, and doing it boldly and confidently in your name. I thank you, Father, for giving me the courage and the strength to be able to stand up boldly in these days and to be able to stand up against these demons because you know I know we are not fighting the flesh. We are fighting demons and principalities and powers in high places. And I get up every single day and put on the armor of God. I completely cover myself in Jesus Christ before I go out. And Father, I thank you for giving me the increased knowledge to be able to know to do that. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Father. I love you, God. I love you, God. I am so, so grateful that you took me out of this garbage dump and you adopted me out of this nasty, dirty, sinful world that you took me out of this world you've seen something of value in me you picked me up and you salvaged me out of the garbage and you cleaned me up and you chipped off all that was bad and you prepared me to be able to be a warrior in these days i thank you father for seeing whatever it was that you saw in me that i never seen and that nobody else in this world saw only you seen it only you were able to pick me up out of that garbage dump and clean me up and make me a man of god that i would be able to stand up in the name of jesus christ and fight this war i thank you father I can't wait to be at your feet and worship you for eternity. I can't wait to get out of this world and be with you, Lord. I can't wait to walk through those gates and be greeted by you and the angels and everybody before me and to be able to meet those that have lived out their purpose and been in you, that you were the vine and they were the branch. I can't wait to meet the disciples, the apostles. I can't wait, wait to meet you, Lord. I can't wait to stand in your presence, Lord. I can't wait for your presence. I can't wait for your love. I can't wait to be with you. Lord, it could be right now, and I would be so, so happy, but I know that it's not now and that there is things to do, and time is not ready, and we are still at war, and I thank you, Lord, for giving me the courage and the wisdom to know that I'm not coming home today, that I got to get up tomorrow and represent you in this world, but I want to be with you so bad. I want to be in your presence. Do not take the Holy Spirit from me. Do not take from me your love, your grace, and your mercy, Father. Lord, I please, 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 please do not take from me my purpose. You have given us so much, and this world hates you, and I can't understand how anybody could hate you when I know how much love, grace, and mercy you give to this world, how much grace you are given in these days. I will never, ever be able to wrap my head around anybody that could possibly hate you, Lord, but they hate you. And they hate you because they hate the truth. Because the truth shines a light on their sin. This world loves their sin. I love you, Lord. I love you. I'm so thankful. I didn't deserve to be adopted out of this world. But it was in your heart that I did deserve to be adopted out of this world. 
and you saved the brokenhearted, and you knew I have spent my entire life brokenhearted, Lord. You were there when my mother killed my father when I was four years old. I knew you were there, Lord. I knew that there was a presence of God that came over me when I was in the back of that ambulance and I watched my mother being taken into a police car and that I would never see her again. I knew, Lord, that you were with me then. You hold all things together. And I am so grateful and so thankful. I pray courage over this body of Christ, over the members of this channel, over the flat out elected family, Lord, I pray, pray, pray that you just put on them the courage to come into the throne room to sit with you and to get the discernment and the gifts that are that, 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 that are that are rightfully theirs in these days. The devil has a lot of people in the body of Christ thinking that they don't have a right to the gifts that you have waiting for them. And I'm here to tell them that through you, they have a right to the gifts of discernment, the gifts of courage, the gifts of peace, the gifts of joy, the gifts of wisdom, the gift of truth. They have a right to that through you. You earned it for them. They have inherited the gifts of the kingdom of God in these days. They have a right to put on the body armor of God. They have earned through you the body of armor. I ask, Father, that you put that on their hearts right now, that they would put on the full armor of God and step up in their purpose and go to war against these demons and principalities in powers and high places. Because one thing we do know is that you sit above them. You are at the right hand of God. And if we are in you, then through you, we are above these demons and principalities. And at the very mention of your name, they flee. Put it on their hearts right now, Lord. Put it on their hearts. Give them the strength to be able to come to you. You said, ask and you will be given. Knock and you will answer. Teach them to go boldly to the throne of God. Show them that you are the way, Father, and nobody gets to the Father but through you. You are the truth and you are the life. Show them what that means, Father. Show them that right now in these days, in this life, they can go to the Father through Jesus Christ and they can receive the gifts of the kingdom of God that they would have the power and strength to be able to withstand and wrestle demons and principalities and powers and high places that we can beat these demons at their own game right now in these days, Father. Teach them this. Bring this truth to them right now. Wake somebody up, Lord. Give them the power to understand, the wisdom to know. Put the fear in their heart that they would come to you and stand before you and receive these gifts right now, Lord. I pray all of this. I speak to you, Father, in the name of the Son, the great Redeemer, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the renewer of the mind. That of which whom died on the cross for our salvation, Lord. I pray all of this in the name of the living waters. I pray this in the name of our Lord and King, Jesus Christ. Amen. To the principalities and reminding the powers and telling them who you are and what's going to happen. That's when you get an attitude. We have access to God with boldness and confidence. We can go boldly to the throne of God. We can go confidently to him. But what does the devil do? He keeps bringing up your past. He keeps bringing up your failures. He keeps bringing up your shortcomings. I'm not going to God on the basis of my righteousness. Not my righteousness. I'm going on the basis of his righteousness and who he is.